today I learned that GAMES is an acronym for Good Afternoon My Eloquent Sandwich, invented by a man suffering from feverish hallucinations while looking for something to eat. That man? Shiguru Miyamoto. Sean Layden, former boss of PlayStation, has shared some surprising opinions about game exclusivity. In an interview with GamesBeast, Layden said that when your costs for a game exceed $200 million, exclusivity is your Achilles heel. Someone should ask Achilles how he feels about all this heel talk. His... Actually, James Achilles is dead. He's dead? Anyway, Layden believes that exclusivity reduces the market you need to make that $200 million back. And that can be especially troubling for live service or free to play games that rely on a small minority of players that continue putting money into the game. They're called whales and they're not me. Layden pointed to the success of Helldivers 2 on PC as an example of getting more people in. He later echoed similar statements on the What's Up PlayStation podcast, addressing the fact that he was in charge during the PS4 era, a solid time for exclusivity. He expanded on his thoughts to say that exclusivity is a super important thing if you're trying to break into a business. He doesn't sound like this, but it becomes less important when you establish how a game would be different on your system versus someone else's. For example, PS5 adds adaptive triggers and a controller speaker for immersion, and Xbox adds a controller that fits comfortably in my hands. Apparently some of Helldivers 2's in-game bugs can smell you. And if you thought I meant the real you and not your game character, maybe you should put down that controller and shower. <laughs> the in-game bugs, not the software bugs. Uh, anyway, we learned this and other facts when game director Johan Pilested and head of product testing Patrick Lasota joined YouTuber operator Drewski for a few brewskis, just joking, a few missions. Pilested told Drewski, units like the stalker will detect you within a certain proximity, no matter if they can see you or not. In, in further Johan news, he took to Twitter and announced players unlocked mechs four times faster than his team thought it would take. And the reward for that is access to the worst mechs in the history of mechs. Super Earth, Super Earth. However, the game is a satire about an inept fascist government that views soldiers as expendable as bullets. So it makes sense that, that they suck. <laughs> what shouldn't suck is the teammate kicking system. Some players have been booted from matches because the host didn't like the weapon they're using. Johan, hero of the people and boss of Joel, God of War, decided to ask the community for solutions. Pillstead may need the hand though since he may be busy adding a third enemy faction, the Illuminant, to the game. They have headlamps. Oh yeah, there's one thing Joel the Blood Drinker needed. It was a third army. And a lost prototype of Time Splitters 4 has been discovered in one of the modern world's most miraculous places, eBay. A Redditor named Flimsy Zebra 3775 we've all been there, claimed to have bought a PS3 dev kit off the site for 525 pounds, or about $670, and found a prototype for the ill-fated game. After getting the prototype to boot, Flimsy Zebra was apparently able to capture some gameplay and demonstrate aim so heinous, Flimsy apologized in the video's description. David Doak, original founder of Free Radical, confirmed the authenticity of the footage and alleged that not a single publisher was interested in this game's nonsense back in 2008. In our opinion, the footage looks a lot better than the leaked development snapshot of Time Splitters Next, the game Free Radical was working on after the studio was reformed by Embracer Group. I specifically like how the 2008 prototype doesn't look like Fortnite, though to be fair, the monkey piloting a suit of knight's armor in Time Splitters 4 would definitely work as a Fortnite skin. I play him. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by PlayTracker. It connects the most popular gaming platforms out there like Steam, Xbox, and PlayStation, and creates a profile that collects and unites all your games, achievements, and stats. As you play, your data syncs to PlayTracker automatically and your profile will level up, giving you more customization options. You can also follow all your friends in one place and compete with them by issuing cross-platform challenges. PlayTracker is completely free, independent, and privacy first. Head to playtracker.net slash gamelinks to create an account and get a quickest bit profile title just for signing up. Quick bits is actually an anagram for sick IQ, but the famous line Albert Einstein said after he learned to fart the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> A trailer leaked for Spider-Man The Great Web, a cancelled 
five person multiplayer PVE co-op game from Insomniac, showing similar gameplay to the Marvel Spider-Man games, but with more spider people. So Sony allegedly decided to cancel the project after pulling back from its overcommitment to live service games. With any luck, this won't be the last we see of this concept and Insomniac will incorporate some kind of multiplayer mode into Spider-Man 3, or maybe a portal into an alternate reality where AAA games don't need to be live service milking machines to be financially viable. Happy to that. Or that, yeah. It's too much milk for me. Dragon's Dogma 2 is getting a lot of praise leading up to its release this month, mostly focused on its character creation since Capcom released the game's character creator for free last week without considering the consequences. The internet has had days to create every fictional character that has ever existed. Characters like Bully Maguire from Spider-Man 3, Paul Atreides from Dune, the Lisa Nagaib, and Pikachu from My Nightmares. WB's platform fighter Multiverse will officially launch on May 28th, almost a full year after the open beta shut down last year. In that time, the game has apparently been rebuilt in Unreal Engine 5. And according to the game director, Shaggy's sandwiches have never looked so good. Everyone gets a random voice with me. <laughs> in addition, the game is adding a PvE mode that will introduce additional ways of playing with unique rewards. And mentioned there will be additional characters. Now that WB and Discovery have fused, hopefully we can get the Mythbusters in there. When Jamie Hadman enters the ring, your face is busted! Your death is confirmed. Readyverse Studios debuted a trailer for Open, a third-person battle royale experience that will launch inside the Readyverse. The studio was co-founded by blockchain tech company Futureverse and Ernest Klein, author of Ready Player One, a novel set in a dystopic future where humanity escapes an impending societal collapse by playing a VR game full of nostalgia bait. Wouldn't you know it, the trailer's description says interoperable with top tier IP through Web3 tech. That's right, they're creating the Oasis! Let's go! Can someone please explain to Ernest Klein what his own book was about though? I'm pretty sure it was about having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> and to celebrate March 10th, otherwise known as Mario Day, and not Mario Day, Nintendo released a video announcing that they're releasing a brand new Super Mario Bros. movie! Two years from now! Illumination hasn't even started animating yet. Note that this isn't necessarily a direct sequel to the Super Mario Bros. movie released last year as Shigeru Miyamoto only said it was another movie based on the world of Super Mario. Nintendo of America tweeted that they were thinking about broadening Mario's world further and promised a bright and fun story. Personally, I'm hoping for a Mushroom Kingdom adaptation of Fight Club, where Luigi hallucinates his macho alternate identity while Luigi and beats up Goombas and Koopas in a bar basement in a visceral critique of modern masculinity. <sighs> And the first rule of GameLinked is come back on Thursday for more gaming news. Tell everyone, actually, you do talk about GameLinked. 